Well, I'm one of the co-founders of SETI at Home, and I'm also the director of the Boink Project, which uh, develops the software that's used by SETI at Home. I, I, I've always been interested in, in the internet and distributed computing and, and using lots of computers for things, so, so this was really uh, uh, right in my area of interest. A friend of mine who was a grad student back in the days when I taught computer science here at Berkeley, a guy named David Getty, in 1995 he had the original idea for SETI at Home. At that point, personal computers were becoming power, powerful enough that you could really think about doing science with them. And uh, the internet was exploding. People were going online with AOL and CompuServe. He had the idea of using those computers to do large-scale scientific computing and looked around for things that might capture the public imagination, um, as well as needing computing power, and came up with SETI. When we designed SETI at home, we were trying to figure out if we had a chance of actually getting enough computing power to do something scientifically useful. We figured the threshold would be 50,000 computers. If we, if we got that many, we could do science that we couldn't do otherwise. And within, oh, probably two or three months, we had a million computers, uh, 20 times more than we thought. Of course, that created a lot of problems with, with uh, beefing up our servers to handle that many. I do remember there was this one day when we came in in the morning and looked at our, our our database and saw how much computing had been, had been done in the last 24 hours, and it was 1,000 years. A thousand years of computing time in one day. And we, we sort of sat back and, you know, let that sink in, and at that point we realized that we were really onto something. SETI is certainly a, 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 a very compelling scientific goal, and, um, and I'm excited by it, but there's a lot of other things that are worthwhile doing too. Um, so in developing Boink, which is really the main thing I've done in the last 10 years or so, the challenge has been to um, accommodate all these different kinds of projects. Some of them are much different from SETI. You know, for, for example, the, the climate prediction computing has jobs that run for, for weeks or months. By and large, the other projects are cranking out research at a, at a kind of the conventional rate and uh, publishing papers. There's a project called Einstein at Home that uh, used volunteer computing and found a whole bunch of new pulsars. Pulsars that are part of binary systems, a very, very exciting kind of pulsar. Um, the biomedical projects, um, uh, I, I, I can't tell you that they've cured cancer or anything like that, but uh, they have published papers in journals like Science and Nature at a, at a pretty good clip. So there's a lot of real science getting done with volunteer computing. Another exciting thing recently has been porting everything to run on smartphones, Android phones in particular, which are, you know, in some ways are the future of consumer electronics. They're not going to replace desktop computers, but there will be more of them. There are more of them currently. Um, and they're becoming very powerful and um, very capable of doing scientific computing. They themselves are starting to have GPUs that are as powerful as you know desktops were a couple of years ago. It's challenging to keep people involved in a, in a long-running project, especially one that, that at this point only has negative results. All we can say is we haven't found anything so far. Everything that we've done may be valuable in that final detection. We're still very active. We're um, in the process of adding new data sources to what we analyze, data from new telescopes, um, expanding the range of frequencies that we look at, um, and always improving our algorithms to, uh, to increase their sensitivity and look for, you know, look for new kinds of signals. We're still here, and the, and the computing still matters.